Before you start the vehicle, you should check Out of the above, the vehicle is in neutral, parking brake is set, and seat belt is fastened. These are all gauges that will need to be checked. The correct answer is water pressure gauge. Which gauge should be between 12 to 14 and in the green? Walt meter. What should the water temperature gauge do when you start the vehicle? Nothing. Then raise slowly as the vehicle warms up. The air pressure in a commercial vehicle should rise to governor cutout of one hundred and twenty PSI. What interior lights do you need to check? All of the above, instrument panel lights, left and right turn indicator lights, hazard indicator lights, and high beam indicator lights. What items are part of your safety equipment? All of the above, fire extinguisher, reflected triangles, road flares, and first aid kit. Testing the parking brake requires you to pull against the engaged parking brake with no movement. During the CDL air brakes tests, the first step is to check for air leakage. True. To test the service brake test, you will need to have the trailer air supply valve in, parking brake in, and the hand brake released. How do you test the service brake? Move slowly and apply the service brake to stop the vehicle. The next step is the CDL air brake test. This portion is done with the engine off, but should you have air pressure built to the governor cutout of 120 and 140? Yes. To test air leakage, the air valves should be Trailer air supply out, parking brake in, trolley released, and pressure on the brake pedal.
Step 1 of the CDL air brake test. Make sure the leak rate of the red and blue line is not unsafe. With a parking brake released and the brake pedal applied, the leak rate should be no more than. Three PSI for a vehicle with no trailer and four PSI for a combination vehicle in one minute. While fanning down the alarm and light indicating low air pressure should come on at eighty PSI. You have connected the converter dolly to the front semi-trailer and then connected the rear semi-trailer to the converter dolly. How should you test the coupling? Pull against the rear semi-trailer's pin. Fanning the brakes down further after the alarm and buzzer come on should result in the parking brake popping out for a single vehicle and the parking brake and the trailer air supply popping out for a combination vehicle at 40 PSI. On which side of the vehicle are the exterior lights you need to check for? Answer B plus rear of tractor and combination vehicles, front of vehicles, both sides of vehicle and rear of vehicle. What lights will you need to check on the exterior? Hazard, left turn, right turn, headlights high and low beam, brake, running and clearance lights. Next, you should fan the brakes down to make sure all air brake safety devices are working. But what should you do before starting to fan the brakes? Turn the key on so that the instrument warning lights come on. How can you be sure you supplied air to a second trailer? Go to the rear of the second trailer and open the emergency line shut off. If a converter dolly is still under the second trailer and you unlock the pencil hook, what would probably happen? The dolly tow bar may fly up. You're visually checking the coupling of a converter dolly to the rear trailer. How much space should be between the upper and lower fifth wheel? None. Which of these will result in the best control on curves? Slowing to a safe speed before entering the curve then accelerate slightly drawing the curve. You want to hook your combination to a second trailer that has no spring brakes. To do this without wheel chocks, you should. Supply air to the trailer air system with the tractor and then disconnect the emergency line. Empty trucks. May have poor traction due to bouncing and wheel lockup.
converter dollies. Sometimes do not have anti-lock brakes. To test the parking brake, you should have the trailer air supply in, trailer hand brake released, and the parking brake out. The parking brake out. When parking your double or triple combination, you should look for a parking space. that you can pull straight through. You don't have to make both air and city horns work to get credit for them. Falls. With the hand valve on, you should test the trailer brakes by opening the service line valve at the rear of the rig. When you do this, you should hear air escapes from the open valve. Double and triple combination vehicles are stable than other types of commercial vehicles. are less stable. You are driving a 100 foot twin trailer combination at 50 miles per hour. The road is dry and visibility is good. You should keep at least seconds of space ahead of you. 11 seconds of space ahead of you. Which of these is not a good thing to do when driving on a slippery road? Use the engine brake or speed retarder. You are doing a walk around inspection of a double or triple trailer rig. You should be sure the converter dolly air tank drain valves are and the pencil hook is closed, latched. Valves are closed, pencil hook is latched. When you uncouple twin trailers, the last step is to Slowly pull clear of the converter dolly. Why must you inspect your double or triple combination vehicle more extensively than a vehicle with only one such semi-trailer? There are more critical parts to check. During an inspection of a double or triple combination, check the unusual things for any combination vehicle and check the shutoff valves, the converter dolly or dollies, and the air brakes on all trailers. You are driving with double trailers and you must use your brakes to avoid a crash. For emergency braking, you should use controlled or stab braking. The first step in uncoupling a converter dolly is
to lower its landing gear.